Hi, I'm Peter Orker of Peter Orker Piano Tuition and it's time for a Tuesday tip for better piano playing. Well today I thought I'd talk about sight reading and uh, specifically the kind of sight reading that you have to do for uh, exam grades. Um, so uh, it's a very specific form of sight reading assessment, very focused and also uh, sadly a cause of great anxiety uh, and even panic amongst candidates. I've observed at, at, at when examining thousands of candidates for piano exams how um, once you get beyond the sort of grade one, two and three, grade four and above, uh, the um, sight reading ability of candidates does tend to become weaker and weaker and it's often the weakest area of the exam. So what can we do about that? Well first of all I'm going to give you 10 tips for uh, managing your sight reading exam. So we're talking specifically about grade exams, grade 1 up to 8 or initial grade up to 8. Um, first of all the main thing is when you get given your sight reading test which for grade exams are very focused uh, they're usually not that long um, we're talking 8 to 16 bars maximum uh, and you get 30 seconds to prepare your performance for the exam which is really really short amount of time and certainly once you get beyond that sort of grade 4-ish level um, is not going to be long enough really for you to play the whole sight reading test through uh, in preparation during that 30 seconds. Uh, so really you have to be very focused on what you do aim your effort at in that 30 second preparation time. So I've got 10 tips. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Um, number one, this may seem obvious, but play something. Um, even if it's full of mistakes, wrong notes, wrong timings and so on, please just make a sound on the piano. That's because if you don't, if you if you just clam up and say to the examiner, I'm sorry, I can't do this, and you will get zero marks. And every mark is important, obviously. And even if you are be below a pass for your sight reading part of the exam, you're still accumulating some marks. So, uh, as I said, it may seem very basic, but play some notes. <laughs> preferably the right ones, but play some notes. Number two, tip number two, uh, and these aren't in any particular order, by the way, I've kind of just brainstormed these. Uh, tip number two, in the preparation time, that 30 seconds, that precious 30 seconds of preparation time, remember you are allowed to play out loud. Um, gone are the days when you had to uh, sit and stare at the music for 30 seconds and were not allowed to actually even play anything. When I did exams back in the... quite a while ago, uh, you were not allowed to even touch the keyboard during that 30 seconds. You had to just... you were only allowed to look at the music. You couldn't play it. So, but nowadays we're more enlightened and examiners are going to encourage you and allow you to play uh, anything you like, you can practice as much as you like during that 30 seconds, but it's important that you make the most of that 30 second preparation time. So here are some things to, um, to check to make sure you're on the right path. First of all, uh, and these may seem obvious things, but you'd be amazed at how often these get missed. First of all, check the time signature. So check how many beats in a bar there are. Then check the key signature and any accidentals that might be coming up in the uh, prep test or, or in the in the test. And then thirdly, check the hand position for at least the starting notes and at least the first couple of bars also. And just check the level of the lowest note, the lowest note in the right hand. Um, 
tend to be where you would put your thumb because many of these tests are in a five finger position or just some slight extensions and just occasional changes of position but at least at the start check where the lowest note is that tends to be where you would put your thumb in the right hand and in the left hand it would tend to be the lowest note would be where you put your fifth finger just double check all that um, in 30 seconds that does give you enough time to, to do that if you've got more time after that then look out for any tricky rhythms that might be coming up um, or any accidentals anything that might just be a cause a bit of a blip in your playing tip number three and this is really important don't be afraid to sacrifice some of the notes um, the key to getting a good mark in sight reading is the musical flow is to keep keep it moving keep it going um, and so if that means you know if there's a big chord or you know a three note chord or even a two note chord uh, and you're a bit wary of working out what those notes each of those notes is then just play one of them probably the top note uh, but you might even miss a few notes out but um, it's more important to keep going okay so don't stop to work out notes just keep playing and if you need to miss out any notes just miss them out and just keep plowing on <laughs> to the end of the test test number four uh, test number four <laughs> tip number four even uh, the speed that you play at well I would always advise you, I mean this isn't official advice from the exam boards or anything like that, I'd like to underline that, but in terms of uh, just <coughs> of, uh, pragmatic, being real, you know, making the best of what might be quite a stressful situation, the speed of the music, I would advise you to take the music at one notch below the speed that's indicated. Now at the lower grades, uh, you won't find anything faster than, let's say, moderato. Uh, as you go up through the grades, you'll get quicker speeds being indicated. But I would suggest that um, take it a notch below. So for instance, if the speed indicated is allegretto, uh, play it at moderato. If it's indicated as moderato, play it at, at andante. If it's indicated at andante, play at largo and so on. So always take it just a notch below what the actual speed indication is. That will give you more thinking time and you're more likely to be able to continue and um, keep that musical, f vital musical flow going. Where are we up to? One, two, three, four. Right, this is tip number five. Count, count, count. Count the beats in the bar as you are playing. Um, observe the time signature, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and keep that beat going all the way through. <clears throat> now, especially, this is a trap that a lot of people fall into, especially look out for long notes. Um, now, you might think, oh, they're the easiest ones because you know you hold on to the notes but uh, you'd be surprised at how many candidates in the heat of the moment will cut short long notes so they might see for instance um, a dotted minim lasting three beats and you'd be surprised at how many people will cut short that dotted minim to maybe even a crotchet um, it's quite surprising sometimes what candidates do so always count Obviously counting your head, uh, probably better not to count out loud, but counting your head uh, so that, especially when you get to those long notes. Next tip, number six, observe the key signature. This is one of the important things to notice when you do your 30 seconds of preparation. What is the key signature? It might be two flats, B flat, E flat. In your preparation time just scan the music and check out 
can you see any B flats can you see any E flats that might be coming up um, and if so make sure you play your flats or your sharps if it's a sharp key signature um, so that's one of the things that examiners will notice they will comment on if you haven't observed the key signature tip number seven if you find you're a bit weak, weaker at reading bass clef than treble clef so your left hand notes try to at least play the first note of each bar so don't worry you might think oh I'm, I have to play everything I have to play everything uh, no you don't <laughs> uh, as long as you play the first beat of each but first note of each bar in your left hand keep the right hand going as much as you can as well um, you'll at least get uh, a sense or the examiner will get a sense that you know the general direction that the music is going in uh, uh, and therefore that will increase your marks um, obviously in an ideal world you get all the right notes all the right rhythms but you know we're talking get real here so it, rather than sacrifice the musical momentum just make sure you get at least the first note of each bar in your left hand tip number eight the number of times I've sat in exams listening to candidates doing sight reading and they stumble really slowly through the music making lots of mistakes but they always seem to want to focus on getting the staccato notes correct and the legato notes correct they seem to be um, almost obsessive about if there's a staccato note they have to play it <coughs> staccato everything else goes wrong but at least they get the, get those staccato notes do you know what articulation is one of those things great if you can include it in your sight reading test but it's one of the fir first things you can sacrifice if uh, you know don't make sure you get the staccatos and legatos correct at the expense of getting the right notes <laughs> so uh, that's kind of quite low down on the priority uh, get your basics right first your notes and your rhythms okay so don't worry too much about articulation same with dynamics if you can get it in fine but that is not top priority they're not top priorities top priorities especially at the lower grades and I'm talking up to about grade five grade six uh, it's most important that you get a musical flow as I said and uh, as much of the accuracy of notes and rhythms nearly there tip number nine um, if you make a mistake and you probably will we all have done um, don't go back and correct the mistake and then continue forward keep moving forward you can't unmake the mistake once it's made it's made forget about it move on to the next bit of the music and keep that music flowing keep the momentum going okay now that's op complete opposite of what you would do when you're sort of actually preparing a, a piece practicing your pieces um, at home before the exam obviously if you make mistakes in your um, bark two-part invention whatever it happens to be then you're going to go back you're going to focus on that place where you made the mistake you're going to practice that group of notes until it's perfect blah 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 in sight reading it's kind of complete opposite if you make them make a mistake you slip onto a wrong note you make a slight mistake of errors just forget it <laughs> and move on that's really really hard to do actually I do appreciate that um, because you're you know you're so trained to go back and correct mistakes in the sight reading test uh, don't <laughs> just keep that music moving forward recover from the mistake as quickly as you can get your fingers back in the right place um, and so on and that leads me to my tenth tip actually which is don't panic 
Um, it's very, especially if you do make a slip and there's a sort of a little blip in there, uh, it, it, it's very easy to panic and then everything else goes completely out of the window. So um, just try to breathe calmly, uh, stay calm and don't think it's the end of the world. Don't be embarrassed either. I mean, examiners have seen and heard it all, believe me. Um, and remember, the sight reading is only a fairly small percentage of your overall mark for the exam. If you get below a pass for the sight reading, but do well in everything else, uh, then it's not the end of the world and you almost certainly aren't going to fail the exam. Okay, the number of people I've seen, they, they do a bad sight reading. You can see on their faces, oh no, I've completely failed the exam. And everything else they've done is brilliant. So uh, the thing is, just, just take it in perspective, put it in perspective. Uh, it's not a massive deal if you completely make uh, a mess up of your sight reading. So those are my 10 tips. One more thing to say is sight reading like everything else is um, something you can improve with practice. And I would always recommend when you do your daily routine piano practice, try and incorporate a little bit of sight reading into that. Now you can obviously buy the sight reading sample tests, uh, the Say Shaky Board version, uh, that kind of thing and the Trinity books as well they do the same sort of thing they give you an example of uh, what the sight reading standard is for each of the grades and of course you can use those uh, there are some books as well available on how to improve your sight reading uh, Paul Harris for instance does a good series on that gives little bits of advice as well similar to the tips I've given you um, but don't worry I haven't pinched them from that uh, these are my own tips um, but just try and read a piece of music it doesn't have to be a specifically sight reading test type piece of music it could be anything at all and um, if you don't have a very big collection of music then I can recommend you go on to the IMSLP website, just, just Google IMSLP, and that contains, I would think, probably tens of thousands of pieces of free music, classical music, it's all out of copyright. You can download anything you like. I would recommend um, that you steer clear of the virtuoso pieces, <laughs> Don't try and sight read Rachmaninoff third piano concerto or anything like that. But uh, by all means, have a look round, find some music. Uh, Bach chorales, for instance, are quite good for sight reading. Once you get above sort of grade five ish, grade four, grade five, you can play around with those. Doesn't really matter actually, and it doesn't matter if it's a bit beyond your playing capability. Just do one hand uh, and just get used to uh, ploughing through music uh, without, as I said earlier, without stopping. That is the key to getting a good sight reading mark is to keep the music moving and keep as much of it as accurate as possible. Well I hope that's been of some help uh, and as I said that's specifically for exam type sight reading uh, which is a peculiar sort of animal of its own <laughs> but one which as so many people do take grade exams uh, it's one that impacts on a lot of people when they're learning to play the piano well thanks for watching and um, i'll see you for the next tuesday tip take care and bye for now